Okay, so we, we know that HSO4 minus uh, has an H, so it, it should be able to act as an acid. So we'll go down the acid column, and we notice that there it is right there. And so that suggests that it can become, uh, has acidic, has properties to give up its proton. And now if you look for the base form, uh, go down the base column, and here it is here. Now it is under the base column, and this is where it does get a little bit strange here, um, is that if you look at the arrow, um, the arrow is one way, which means that the reaction cannot go in the reverse direction, which means that HSO4 minus cannot go backwards into H2SO4. So although it's under the base column, HSO4 uh, cannot act as a base, and it does not have the ability to take a proton. So HSO4 minus um, can act, um, and it does act, as an acid. It gives up its proton. So in this case, um, the HSO4 um, minus is, uh, this, this compound here, is only an acid. So it can only act as an acid. So let's take a look at HSO3 minus and see if that's also true um, for that. So I'm going to erase uh, these two choices here, and I'm going to go on the hunt for HSO3 minus. So going down my list, um, HSO3 minus, there we go. So HSO3 minus is here under the acid column. So there it is acting as an acid. It seems to be able to do that okay. And if I go um, a little bit higher up, um, actually quite a bit higher up, um, HSO3 minus is here. And there it is able to act as a base. It's equilibrium arrows there. So the compound HSO3 minus um, has uh, acidic properties and basic properties. So it can act as both. So if I go back to my earlier notes here, um, then we would say that this compound is amphiprotic. Now remember our, our rules up above, we said that in order to be amphiprotic, you had to have an H and you, you need to have a negative charge maybe to, to take that. So um, I think HSO4 minus might trick a lot of students because you might think, well, look, it's, it's, got a, it's got an H, so it should be able to be an acid. It's got a negative charge, so it should be able to be an acid or a base, sorry. So, but it, it can't. It's only an acidic, uh, only, only only a compound that can act as an acid. It can only donate a proton. So, whereas HSO3 uh, minus. Uh, another weird exception to that rule that that is actually amphiprotic is water. So water um, has uh, obviously has H's. So that kind of makes sense. It could be an acid, but notice it doesn't have a negative charge. Um, but water can be um, amphiprotic, actually. So it's also able to have amphiprotic um, compounds or amphiprotic, amphiprotic properties. That's a tongue twister for me. Um, okay, so I'm going to list a few more compounds and see what you what you think they would be um, um, using the data table here. So let's say uh, H, uh, HP, um, HPO4, H2PO4 uh, minus 1, maybe. Um, NH3, and uh, let's try one more sort of a strange one, um, maybe um, H, HNO3. So which ones do you think are um, amphiprotic here? Okay, so I'm gonna erase these ones here. So we'll go on the hunt for, I think it was uh, H, H PO, H2PO4. So H2PO4, so there's H2PO4 right there. And then H2PO4 is here. So what do you guys think about that? It's on both sides of the table, equilibrium arrows. So that's pretty looking amphiprotic. Um, let's take a look at um, NH3 now. So um, NH3, if I go way to the bottom, there's NH3. Um, if I go higher up, there's NH3. It's on both sides of the table, just like the other compounds, so that's got to be amphiprotic, right? Well, if you look at the arrows, um, the first uh, arrow, higher one up here, that suggests it can be a base, it can go that way. But if you look at the um, down at the acid one here, this one right here, uh, notice that this compound here cannot actually go forward. The arrow points the other way. It can't go that way. So this actually, NH3, cannot act as an acid. It is, once again, it's under the acid column. 
but it cannot act as an acid. It cannot go in the forward direction. So NH3 is not amphiprotic. It would only act as a as a base. That's right. So as a base. And in our last example, um, I got kind of clustered, so I just chose a, a random compound, and we can see that HNO3 um, is right here. And uh, if we look down lower on the table um, or higher up, there's no HNO3 on the base side. So this compound can only act um, as an acid. So its only choice is to be an acid. So if we go back to our notes here, um, we could say that H2PO4 is amphiprotic. The um, NH3 is only a base, can only be a base. And the HNO3 um, is most certainly um, an acid and only an acid. So hopefully that makes sense to some of the amphiprotic uh, compounds that are out there. And we'll be um, moving on then from, from there. So um, let's look at conjugate acid-base pairs here. So this is not too bad to look at. Um, and so these are basically two chemicals that differ by having uh, uh, one proton. Um, so I'm going to use an example we did earlier um, in the chapter. So we had HCO3 minus plus water. Uh, and that's forming into um, H2CO3 and um, hydroxide. And so that would be the compound acting as an acid on the far side, um, or as a base, sorry, oh my goodness, as a base. I was so used to my ABBA rule. Um, and then over here, this would be the base. And then the water would be acting as the acid here, giving a proton to that. And on this side would be the acid. So we got Bob. So um, here we go. So if we look at uh, the sort of, I guess, the pairs or species of chemicals that kind of resemble each other, um, we've got this compound on the reactant side, and we've got this compound on the product side. And if you look at those, the only difference between those is a single proton difference. So that's what we refer to as a conjugate um, acid-base pair. So HCO3 minus, or H, sorry, H2CO3, that would be the conjugate acid. And then HCO3 minus would be the conjugate base. So I'll kind of call this the conjugate acid and this would be the conjugate base. And so basically they differ by one proton. They just have one proton difference. So in that pattern, there's another conjugate acid-base pair. And so maybe you could write down what you think the conjugate acid is and what the conjugate base is. So I'm gonna just uh, use um, red this time. So H2O is actually acting as the acid and its conjugate base, if you take one H away, would be OH minus. Boy, I'm getting spammed a lot these days. Okay, so um, hopefully nothing inappropriate. Uh, here we go. So H2O and OH minus, they would be a conjugate acid um, base uh, pair. So let's just try um, one more example like that. Let's take a look at, uh, see if I can squeeze it in um, here. So. Let's try HCO3 minus uh, reacting with, um, let's say, HPO4 2 minus. Okay. That is strange having that there. Um, and uh, let's say that we're going to tell you that this compound, mm -hmm. this may not be true if you look at the data table, let's just, let's just go with this right now. Let's say that's the acid and that's the base. I'd like you to predict the products and then write the conjugate acid-base pairs. Okay, so if uh, the first one is the acid, it has to be able to donate the proton. So it's gonna lose a proton turning into CO3 two minus. And the other compound would have to take the proton uh, turning into H2PO4. What do you think the charge would be here? You're giving it a proton. So the proton increases the charge by one. So overall, you're going to be at negative one now. So on the other side here, the acid would be this compound. And this would be the base. So we can see that for every acid you have, it would have to